Hey guys, okay, I'm gonna be kind of like at a weird angle for this. I just, I hate that like light coming in from outside. Um, excuse me, uh, cause I'm gonna do my June, I was, I was going to lofty, lofty. Oh gosh, I love having ideas and not following through. I was gonna start doing like a video once a month, like so my, you know, my wrap up, whatever, and then also my haul, TBR like revisit and balancing books, whatever, so on haul. Um, I was gonna do those videos starting in June, but then now it's August. So I'm just gonna do a quick June haul, June unhaul, July haul. I didn't have time to unhaul any books last month because frankly, uh, last month was just ridiculous. So let's start first with, I guess, the things that I got in my subscription boxes, um, I suppose. Um, so of course I got my copy of the Paris Review issue 237. One of these days I'll start reading those and it'll be really fun. Um, and then obviously I got my poetry magazine. Um, and then I got, I need to find a better place to set these down. Um, my, uh, in, in, my Literati, my Literati Insisto subscription from the Literati bookstore in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Um, and this is Winter in Shok, Show, Shok Show. I should know how to say that because it is a place. I'm very bad. I'm going to buy Eliza Shua Dusapin. I don't know if this is translated. It is um, by Anissa Abbas Higgins. And this is an open letter book. Um, open letter press, I guess. Um. Uh, no idea what this is about, but I am loving this cover. It looks like one of those fun old postcards. I really like that. And then um, the book from Finney, uh, which is uh, Finney by Post, which is a bookstore in Seattle, Washington, is Thomas and Beulah, poems by Rita Dove. And this is the winner of the 1987 Pulitzer Prize for Poetry. So that's pretty exciting. And here is Rita on the back. And yeah, I have no idea, but... I look forward to that. Um, great. Uh, I also was gifted a book. Um, I was gifted two books. Oh my God. What a fun month. Um, so my coworker gave me this book. I, I have the little sticky that she put on there. I'm a huge Parker Posey fan and um, she read this and I guess she didn't like it that much. Didn't like it that much. So she gave it to me. Um, You're on an airplane, a self mythologizing memoir. Uh, yeah, Parker Posey is hilarious. I think the first movie that I watched her in was Dazed and Confused. Is that my mom? Uh, I don't know. My mom's walking around. I don't know when she's going to come home. Um, but yeah, uh, Dazed and Confused. She was so, so good in that. Actually, no, Josie and the Pussycats was the first movie that I ever watched her in, but she is fantastic in everything. Um, I kind of need to do a, a check to see, because I don't know if I've watched every one of her movies, um, but I would like to have watched every one of her movies. And then I also got sent this in the mail by Doors, which is so sweet. Um, the back, the Black Cathedral by, um, uh oh, Marcial, Marcial, Gala. I should know how to say that. C's confuse me. Havana. So, Marcial. I'm gonna guess. C's confuse me because sometimes I make a ch noise and sometimes I make a s noise. Um, but this is translated by Anna Kushner. I have no idea what this is about, but that's really exciting that it's a Cuban author. And yeah, I have no idea why she sent this to me. I actually was going to write a letter to her asking her why. And that was in June that she sent this to me and I still haven't read it, writ written it to her. So Doris, <laughs> if you could let me know. I mean, obviously I'm very, very grateful and I'm very excited, but um, yeah, it was really sweet, but she just didn't like tell me why she thought I would like it, you know? Um, all right, then I've got a couple of books that I got for the Invisible Cities Project. These are both from author, these are both authors from Barbados, um, which was, oh, it's The Postman, The Postman. Oh, thanks. Um, uh, Barbados, which was our, was one of, was the country, I think, for June, for Invisible Cities Project. So this is Black and Blues by um, Kamu, Kamau, um, Brathwaite, and this is a, a poetry collection. I'm pretty sure it's Barbados. It doesn't say where he's from on the back, so I'm get, uh, second guessing myself, but I feel pretty confident that that is why I bought this. Gosh, now I just really wish that I had looked things up. Yeah, I'll just say Barbados. Yeah, so yeah, Barbadian art, Bar Barbadian. I'm sorry guys, it's been a day and I am a drinking beer. All right, and then I also got The Polished Hoe by Austin Clark, um, which obviously I bought because 
I mean, first of all, I bought it because of the cover, but I bought it because of Dee Dee, because <laughs> she uh, loved this book. Um, and I obviously want to read it. And I thought I was going to in June. And guess what? Didn't happen. Um, and then I've got a couple of books um, that I purchased for the Reading Latines book club, but um, I guess they're taking like a hiatus or they've decided to like, you know, pause. Hopefully it's just a pause and not a permanent thing. Um, but I bought my um, my Tender Matador by Pedro Lemebel, translated by Catherine Silver. I'm just guessing how to pronounce these people's names, just in case you guys are wondering. Um, this was a book from a while ago that I was only able to find um, on like Libby or something for free. I couldn't find a physical copy of it and I was having so much issue. I cannot, surprisingly, it's harder for me to read an ebook than it is to listen to an audiobook. It was infuriating. I couldn't do it. Um, I was getting distracted. I didn't know what was going on. So I'm really glad that I found a copy of this. I don't even remember where I bought it, but it's, um, a Grove Press. So it's, um, I guess a Grove Atlantic. Um, so I'm really pleased with that. And then I also got this one. This was um, going to be for the Dominican Republic, which I think was in the month of June. Um, and this is uh, Between Two Silences by Hilma Contreras, edited and translated by Paulette Ramsey and An Ana Maria Banque. Banque? <laughs> I don't know. But uh, yeah, I have no idea what this is. I think this is like a, a children's book, maybe? I'm just guessing based on the figure on the front who looks like she could be a child. But I don't know. Um, then I had to return something and then I had like credit kind of, so I got Juneteenth um, from my local bookstore. I think I had tried to purchase the hardcover version of Black Spartacus for a book two prize and like it never came. And then like, the round ended and I was like, dude, it's not my book. And they still didn't have it. And the paperback is coming out in September. So I'm just going to buy the paperback when it comes out. Um, and so I had some money. So I got this, I got another book too, but I don't remember what it was. And I, I don't see it here. So I must have read it or at least started it. But anyways, yeah, Juneteenth by Juneteenth by Ralph Ellison. Um, I feel like everyone has been talking about this. Have people been talking about this? I actually haven't been watching booktube, so I don't know. But like in the real world, people have been talking about this. So I am really excited to read that. Uh, then, actually, no, no, no. Uh, then uh, Kathleen Ann was in town. Let me just have a sip of beer. Hold on. Mm. Wet the gullet. We're at seven minutes. So let's see how much longer it takes me to do this. Uh, Kathleen Ann was in town. And so we went to Broadway Books because obviously, you know, she was in town. Um, and then I, I, I don't remember if I picked this up because she was picking it up. Maybe she didn't. I don't remember. Kathleen, did you buy this? Um, but yeah, I'm really interested in Masha Gessen as a human. Uh, they are on Democracy Now! all the time. Well, maybe not all the time, but you know, frequently enough that I recognize the name, but I haven't read any of their works. So this is Surviving Autocracy. I think Masha, Masha, Masha Gessen is like from a place. <laughs> you know, Masha Gessen is an interesting person that is very, very smart. And yeah, like look at, listen to the titles of these books. Dead Again, The Russian Intelligista After Communism, Esther and Rosia, How My Grandmothers Survived Hitler's War and Stalin's Peace, Blood Matters from Inherited Illness to Designer Babies, How the World and I Found Ourselves in the Future of Jean, you know, The Man Without a Face, Unlike the Rise of Vladimir Putin, War, Words Will Break, con oh, <laughs> wow, Words Will Break Cement, The Passion of Pussy Riot. Oh, I think I need that book. Um, but anyways, yeah, so I really want to read this book and I will just add it to my list of things to read. And then I also got, um, I wasn't like sure what to buy when Kathleen was here because I didn't like, you know, I don't know. I wasn't, I was just, you know. So I got um, the new issue of McSweeney's. This is something that I should be subscribed to also because I think it would be so much cheaper because it's like 20 bucks or something. How much is it? $26 people. <sighs> Terrible. But if you're subscribed, obviously it's way cheaper. So yeah, this is number 63 and I'm excited about that. And then a pre-order of mine came in, which is She Memes Well by Quinta Berenson. Um, she, the only thing that I've watched her in is the first season of Black Lady Sketch Show or a black lady sketch show and I just like to me she was the funniest part and I'm really disappointed because she's not in the new season and I apologize if I'm talking really really fast I just have a lot to talk about and so I'm trying to kind of like get all the words in as quickly as possible I realize that I sound like I am just already on 1.5 times speed even though I'm not <laughs> um so yeah I am really really excited I think that she is so funny I'm so excited I'm really into this like brand of book you know like 
humorous celebrity memoir. I think the first ones that I read were like Chelsea Handler, which I now I don't think that I would like as much, but I'm not going to reread them to find out. So anyways, yeah, very, very excited about this. I mean, I guess not excited enough to have read it already, but you know, excited enough to have pre-ordered it. <laughs> That's what matters is supporting the people that we care about. Um, so then I was like, oh, okay, I need to unhaul a bunch of stuff because blah, blah, blah too many books. So I was like, why do I own any of Bill Bryson's books? Do I actually give a shit? Excuse my language. I don't like to curse on this channel just in case like people see it, whatever. I mean, I know people are technically at least one person hopefully is watching this, but you know what I mean? I'm a nurse. I'm not trying to be <laughs> cursing, but why do I have this shit? Like really? Who cares? He's just some like cranky white guy traveling around. I don't even know if he's from the UK or if he's from the US, but he goes to one of them and he thinks he knows everything and writes about it. And um, it's annoying to me. I, I don't know. I either got these from my dad's house or I bought them for two bucks. I think it could be a combination of both. Like maybe my dad had one or two of these and then I got the other ones from the... Um, library book sale because you know two dollars a pop it's really hard to resist things uh but yeah so i'm getting rid of notes from a small island um neither here nor there travels in europe and the life and times of the thunderbolt kid i just feel like there's more fun stories for me to read and also if i ever wanted to read these in the future i could for sure get, these are library books these are books you get from the library not books that you have in your collection <laughs> you know what i mean um, then I've got a couple of, again, dusty old books that I'm like, do I want to get rid of these? I've got two copies of Robinson Crusoe and I own another copy. I think I own another copy of Robinson Crusoe that is like a newer, cuter version. But these are really fun copies. So I feel kind of sad, but I've never even read this book. Do I need to own three copies of one book? Probably not. Uh, so this is Robinson Crusoe and the Farther Adventures of a Robinson Crusoe. And this one is just Robinson Crusoe. Is it Caruso? It's, it's spelled Crusoe. So I don't know. But yeah, so these are pretty cool copies. Um, if you live in the States and like want them, please let me know. I mean, there's nothing like physically that I see that's wrong with them. They look just like, like there's no moldiness or anything gross on them. I just don't need them because I have another copy of it. Womp womp. Uh, then Cold Comfort Farm by Stella Gibbons. I haven't read this book. I don't know anything about this book. I'm not opposed to reading this book. I actually would like to read this book. But again, I actually hate these editions. Um, what is this? The deluxe editions. These like illustrated ones with the, you know, with the, the book flaps. And I think they have, yeah, it has deckled edges a little bit. But um, I just hate the way this looks. This is not my aesthetic and I got this for $2 at a library book sale, 100%. So I'm not bothered about getting rid of it. Then I have this book, who knows? I don't know, I got this also at a library book sale. Um, Michael Dibden, um, Così Fan Tutti. Obviously I bought it because I thought it was Italian. I should have guessed by the Dibden last name, but I mean Così Fan Tutti, that's an Italian, you know, that's Italian. He's not Italian, he's British. And I feel like I started, I don't know, cause it was so long ago that I DNF'd these, but you know, I tried reading it a little bit and it was just like, bleh, who cares? Who cares? And then I've got another classic ARC situation. I've been holding on to it because I'm like, I wanna read this book, but I hate ARCs. And I also, can someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I've heard something not good about this book. I'm gonna have to Google before I like rebuy it. Cause I do, I am obviously interested in microbes and stuff, but I think that maybe someone was telling me that this is on along the vibes of that other person whose books I got rid of that, um, I already don't remember who they are, where it's like, not like really scientific. It's like more talking about stuff that it's like not as scientific as I want it to be. Let me know if I'm wrong. Let me know if I'm right, please. Then I've got some really fun, juicy stuff. This is definitely my dad. So my dad gave these books to me or he gave me one and then, uh oh, is that my mommy? Hold on, let's pause this situation. <laughs> okay, so where was I? <laughs> Do you want some? Okay. <laughs> Okay, so these books I definitely got from my dad's house and oh boy, do I not have any interest in reading either of them. 
this guy, see, this is a shame. If I had filmed these videos right after I'd done research on this person, this would be much more fun. But basically, the vibe is that this is a guy who thinks he's like really, really smart, but has made up a bunch of garbage trash. <laughs> it's just like so not real. Um, let me see. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna read, I'm just gonna read you the preface. Earth and Upheaval is a book about the great tribulations to which the planet on which we travel was subjected in prehistorical and historical times. The pages of this book are transcripts of the testimony of mute witnesses, the rocks, in the court of celestial traffic. They testify by their own appearance and by the encased contents of dead bodies, fossilized skeletons. Myriads upon myriads of living creatures came to life on this ball of rock suspended in nothing and returned to dust. It's just ridiculous. Um, let me Google about this guy really fast and tell you guys because it is actually very funny, I think. I think so. I slept pretty well last night. I mean, I'm not sleepy. No, but you're tired, you're not sleeping. Because your body needs sleep. Because it's hard to sleep. Yeah. I mean, okay, I'm gonna keep filming my video now. Okay, <laughs> um, so I'm just on Wikipedia right now, but his ideas have been rejected by mainstream academia, and his work is generally regarded as erroneous in all its detailed conclusions. Suppressed genius, he calls himself. Anyways, obviously, what is the point of wasting one's time reading trash like that? So I'm gonna get rid of those little fun guys. And then the last one that I'm that I unhauled in June is Atlas Shrugged uh, by Anne Rand, Ayn Rand, who knows? Um, I do have another one of her books, um, The Fountainhead, and I do plan on trying to read it. Um, but this one is mass market and it's just like, look how tiny. I just don't want to hold this in my hands. I feel like it's going to hurt physically. So I don't know if this is the one that, ever, like, I feel like everyone, everyone, people have read one or the other, maybe. I'm not sure, but yeah, I don't, I don't care. I mean, I don't care for this person in general, but I need to at least get a taste of, my, of it myself. I'm not going to just like take people at their words. I want to know. I want to know what's up. All right, so June, no, July, Bacall. Um, so I did receive Femme, finally, by Magda Carnechi. Carnechi, translated by Sean Cotter. And I'm, I bought this for Romania, which was like a couple months ahead of time, or a couple months before July. But I think, excuse me, I think it was out of, like, print or something. So they republished it, or that's not the right word. It was, like, backordered, maybe? Anyways, this is a deep vellum book. Um, and then I got my two subscription books. I got uh, from from the Literati Bookstore, uh, The Passenger by Cheney Quack, uh, How a Travel Writer Learned to Love Cruises and Other Lies from a Sinking Ship. This is a cute little hardcover. Um, it looks like some kind of travel memoir. So, you know, and this is published by... What, what, what publisher is this? Godin. I don't think I've heard of them. Godin, uh, Boston, Massachusetts. So I haven't heard of that, but that's fun. And then the one from, uh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I was like, I don't remember purchasing this independently. But anyways, this is uh, the my Finney by Post book. And this is The Names, a memoir by M. Scott Mamaday. Um, and yeah, I am not 100% sure. It says a Native American version of Roots on the back. So... Sounds good to me. I mean, I haven't read Roots, but I know what it's about. <laughs> Should also read Roots. That's also on my books, on my books, on my bookcase. Um, and then I purchased Blood of the Dawn uh, by Claudia Salazar Jimenez, translated by Elizabeth Breyer. And I bought this for Mel's Book Club, which I am showing you because I didn't read it. So I should have added this to my Women in Translation thing, but I didn't. And I've already got 31 books, so that's okay. Um, and then I have contemporary short stories from Central America. And I bought this for a specific reason. It was for Invisible Cities. 
I think it was Panama. I think we did Panama and I couldn't like find a book with Panamanian authors. So this has, oh, I guess I could have told you. It has authors from Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador. ¿Quieres algo, mami? ¿Está allá adentro? Somewhere. Boop. Um, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, and Panama. <laughs> I don't to say Panama with a Spanish accent. But anyways, I'm, I'm excited to, I, I love these kinds of books. Although sometimes they're not as hitty as they are Missy, but it's really fun because then you can discover new authors. I love anthologies. Then Jake and I went and saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood at the Hollywood Theater here in Portland, Oregon. They had, they reopened the movie theater finally after, you know, a year and some odd months or whatever. And so they did um, a weekend of, I think it was 35 millimeter prints maybe, or 70. I don't know. I'm not like a huge film person, but it was like special prints. It was a special version of movies. It's a 35 or 70. Ugh, I'm hit, hitting myself. But Quentin Tarantino made an, uh, a book version of his movie. And I'm so excited. And it's like so fun because it's like a, you know, trashy mass market, which I feel like is perfect for his style. I, I do love Quentin Tarantino. I am sorry. I know that a lot of people have problems with him. Um, but I think that he's got at least a brilliant mind. I don't have any kind of opinion on his personality, but um, his movies are some of my favorites. Um, and that was like all I had bought in the month of July for a really, really, really long time because I didn't buy any books on my trip. And then I made a horrible mistake which was buying a bunch of books the day before Grace came into town. You know, Grace. Yep, yeah, Grace. <laughs> so the day before Grace came into town, I went to Seattle with Jake because his sister, you know, is hurt, got hurt. And so we were just, busy. she's fine. But we were like visiting and I was like, I need to buy some books. So we went to Island Books, which is the bookstore that's closer to our house. And also I want to say one of my favorite bookstores just in general. Um, so I got a bunch of stuff. I got five. Again, the day before Grace came to town, I bought five books. Um, and I have no idea about any of these. I just bought them because I felt like it. Uh, this is Sevastopol by Emilio Freya. 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 Emilio Freya. Um, I think this is translated. Yeah, translated from Port Portuguese, of course, by Zoe Perry. And this is a New Directions paperback original. Um, yep. You know, uh, then the house guest by and other stories by um, Amparo uh -huh. Davila Davila, um, and this is a Mexican author, and this is a New Directions paperback as well. And this is translated by Audrey Audrey Harris and Matthew Gleason. I cannot speak right now. I feel like I've seen a lot of people talk about this book, but I don't remember. Um, then Nervous System by Lena Meruane. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I should look these things up. I say that every time and I never do. Anyways, this is translated by Megan McDowell and this author is Chilean. How would you say that, mom? Meruane? M-E-R-U-A-N-E. With your expertise in the Spanish Mina language. Meruane. 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 But that's not Spanish, that name. Well, she's Chilean. Anyways, um, then I have Loop by Brenda Lozano, by, translated by Annie McDermott. And this is a Charco Press book, which is now distributing in the U.S. Very exciting. Um, so super pumped on that situation. Um, and then The Twilight Zone by Nona Fernandez, uh, translated by Natasha Wimmer. And this is also a Chilean author. I guess I forgot to mention. I think this is a Mexican author. Doop, doop, Mexico City. And what is the publisher of this? Gray Wolf. Okay. Um, this is a great... It's right like that. Gray Wolf press book. And I am... Um, this is on my TBR for... Women in Translation Month. So I'm excited about that. Then again, Grace came into town. We first went to a book for pictures where she didn't get anything because she's a good girl. I'm a bad girl. <laughs> so um, I got two. I got Guantanamo Voices, True Accounts from the World's Most Infamous Prison, edited by Sarah Merck, um, introduction by Omar L. Akkad. Um, and this is a local uh, Portland author, I think, um, Sarah Merck, or at least a local, I don't know if she's an author, but she's a Portland 
person. Um, and so I think this has different, oh, and it looks, I don't know if I'm being crazy, but it looks like the style, like the, the illustration styles are different for the different stories, but don't quote me on that. So yeah, this is gonna be uh, extremely infuriating to read. But yeah, and then I saw this and I was like, oh my gosh, um, this is um, Kusama by Elisa Machelati is how I want to pronounce her last name. Is that how you pronounce it though? Um, this is a graphic novel and I was like, oh, and then Grace was giving me all the lowdown. And so I did see um, her, one of her pieces of art at the Broad when I went to LA, like in 2018, I think. I'm not sure, but um, I'm really excited about this. Oh, and this is translated by Edward Fortes. I'm gonna have to look up where Elisa's from because that looks and sounds like an Italian name to me, but I'm wrong about so much, so much. And yeah, I'm, I should add this to my, it's too late. I've, I've got, I've got my list already guys. Um, and then the rest of these books, I'm going to say <laughs> a lot of the time it was Grace just like pointing out a book and like kind of describing it and then me saying, okay, you got me. I'll take it. Um, so the only book that Art. I got two two books independently before she said anything to me. And the first is Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead by Olga Tokarshuk. Um, and, you know, she's the author of Flights, which is on my list of things to read. This is translated by Antonia Lloyd-Jones. Uh, I feel like most people have read this book or at least talked about it. And then this one, which looked really interesting to me, um, Bezoar, Bezoar. And other unsettling stories by Guadalupe Nettel, Nettel, translated by Suzanne Jill Levine. Um, and this is Seven Stories Press, and it is um, a short story collection, which is really confusing to me because it's so small. I definitely thought it was a poetry, but it is uh, prose, so we'll see. I don't, I don't know how many, how many stories. Ah, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six stories. I guess that that works. Um, okay. So then she saw Braiding Sweetgrass and was talking about how great it was. And I was like, oh yeah, I bought that for my friend and I really want to read it. And then I was like, whatever, I'll just snatch it up. I am not buying anything or I'm buying very little in the month of August. Um, this is by Robin Wall Kimmerer, um, Indigenous Wisdom, Scientific Knowledge and the Teaching of Plants. And my friend who I bought it for, obviously she absolutely loved it too so I'm excited about that um then I don't know in which order she was like talking about books but you know let's just go for it um first I have pizza girl which I have I think part of the thing too is that most of the books that she was like these are good I was already kind of eyeing them a little bit and then when she gave the a-ok -okay, I was like okay that's all I needed that's the only encouragement I needed um so yeah pizza girl by um Jean Kwong Frazier um, and yeah, I have no idea. I, it's not translated. I don't think, um, it's another anchor books. So I'm like, whatever. Oh, and this is, um, milk, milkweed press is that one. Uh, then Luster, uh, by Raven Leilani, um, pick a door. Yeah. See, it's really interesting to me that all of like the books that I recognize people talking a lot about are all not small presses, you know, cause, um, Riverhead, or I'm sorry, Anchor Books um, is uh, is a is a Penguin book, yeah, Penguin Random House, and then Picador is Picador. I don't know if they have like a larger publishing house, but it's definitely like a more well known, yeah, Fair Strauss and Giraud. Is that how you pronounce that? I don't know, but yeah, it's I I find that kind of annoying, and like this one, I mean this one too. This is a pen, I mean that's Penguin. That, Sorry guys, I'll get off my soapbox. Um, I don't 100% know what this book is about, but I know that a lot of people have read it and liked it. And again, Grace was like, yeah. And I was like, yeah. Uh, then If I Had Your Face by Frances Cha. Um, I don't know what this is about at all, but she made it sound like it was a little like mystery kind of thriller-y, a little sinister also. Penguin Random House. Look at quieres. I mean, si quieres, yo creo que hay uno que ha abierto ya. Okay, let me just finish. I'm almost done. I'm on my last book. Um, okay, so the last one is The Woman in the Purple Skirt. Oh. Mm -hmm. La encontraste. Tu funda, creo. 
¿Hay una funda tuya ahí con lentejas? Ya. Yeah. <laughs> um, the Woman in the Purple Skirt by Natsuko Im Imamura. Um, and Grace said that she's reading this for Women in Translation Month. And this is also Penguin. <laughs> and this is translated by Lucy North. I'm not mad that a big publisher is publishing things in translation because obviously it's important, but I wish that there was just more love for small presses. That's all I have to say about that. Did I mention, I don't know if I mentioned the translator because I got so confused by the Penguin <laughs> books down here. Um, this is translated by Lucy North. And I think I just saw Maddie um, uh, talk about this or like she's doing a Japanese novella like summer thing and she read this and really liked it. So I'm very excited. Yeah. Oh my gosh, and I almost forgot about this book. I was given this book, oh my gosh. Okay, so at the wedding, I'm just a mess, I'm sorry guys. At the wedding, um, one of the other bridesmaids, as we were leaving um, the hotel where we all stayed, um, she gave this book to me. It's The Empath Experience, What to Do When You Feel Everything, which is not my style of book at all. But um, I don't know, the, the spirit and with, in which she gave it to me was like very, very meaningful. Um, so I would like to read this. Um, and yeah, it, it probably will make me cry, unfortunately, which I'm like, wah, wah, wah. Um, but I, I will read it um, hopefully soon so that I can like tell her how I feel about it because I do think it's really kind because um, she bought it for herself for her to read it. But then she was like, no, you need this book more than I do. So she gave it to me which is really sweet. So anyways, I will um, link below if I remember to link below things like the Literati and Finney Press and maybe some small publishers that I mentioned. Hopefully I'll remember to do that and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.